Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, we got a little bit of an emergency video. I was not expecting to be filming this on incredibly short notice, but uh, Valve has done something pretty wild, okay? For anybody that hasn't been following what's been going on today, Valve has decided to release SteamOS, okay? Boom, it's available. You can download it, you can install it on things that are not a Steam Deck. So, you know, the one way that Valve can really bring the heat to Microsoft at a competitive standpoint is over these handheld gaming systems. Now, right here, you can see that I have a Asus Rogue, all right? This is the device we're using today, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, you know, I actually have, like, a whole bunch of these handheld devices, but I wanted to show you how this stuff can get going and running. So, I'm going to just kind of jump in. I'm going I'm to show you how to get this installed, and we're going to take a look at it. We're going to see how it works, and we're going to go over some benefits, okay? Now, for a lot of these devices like the Asus Rogue or the Legion Go or a lot of these other handhelds that are not the Steam Deck, the problem with these handhelds is they come with Windows. And for most people, I don't think it's going to be the biggest problem in the world. You, as long as you know how to use a Windows system, you can navigate the interface, install your launchers, and play your video games. And in some cases, it's actually great because you can play games that have like anti-cheat problems, you can play tons of games uh, where if you wanna be modding them, it's significantly easier to do, but you know, just to give you a argument's sake over here, obviously the interface is not as clean as the Steam Deck, okay, which is kind of designed to be almost like a console. Now, even when you're playing video games, for instance, you know, games like Cyberpunk 2077 actually run better on this device because it's significantly stronger than the Steam Deck. But the problem with this is uh, one thing for me, and this is a pretty huge problem. One of them is there are no touchpads on the device, which means that for a lot of older PC games, it's kind of a little bit of a nuisance to play, personally speaking, and I do play a lot of old stuff. But the other problem is suspending. So one of the big features of like a Nintendo Switch is, you know, you can play the game for a little bit, you can hit the power button and throw the device away, and you can come back later and play it as if, you know, nothing uh, ever happened. And that was a huge thing with the Steam Deck, right? Like, you can play a little bit of these games, you can slap that power button, and the device effectively goes into a pretty heavy sleep mode. Now, for me, this is pretty important. Like, if I'm traveling and I'm throwing in a handheld PC into my backpack, and God forbid it's still running, the heat that's generated could A, damage the device, and just not be a good time in general. <laughs> Now, the problem with these Windows devices is, for some reason, hitting that power button isn't as smooth. The devices still tend to run, and uh, sometimes they're generating crazy amounts of heat in the background. And, in some cases, it just fails to do it. So you'll throw a device somewhere in your backpack, or you'll put it down somewhere, and suddenly it's still draining the battery. Now, in my hand, I actually do have the device running in hand, and if I hit that power button, Lo and behold, it fires up and I can play my games in complete ease, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this is SteamOS running on this fancy little device. Now, how do we get this going, okay? So, first things first, for, for gamers, you want to go to Valve's SteamOS page. Now, it used to be you could download, like, old SteamOS from back in, like, the Steam Machine days, like Debian stuff. But here they've said that this is Valve's Linux system. It's a seamless user experience, optimized for gaming, yada, yada, yada. So here they kind of go over the key features. They show you, you know, again, it's, it's literally easy console-like experiences. And interestingly enough, on devices like this, one of the new features that has popped up is them pointing out SteamOS capability. So going back to the Rogue, let's say you go to the library, right? And I, I choose to download certain games. For instance, inside over here, one of the things that you're not noticing at the top is Steam Deck. Uh, and that's because this is not a Steam Deck. So, for instance, if I choose to go down to Assassin's Creed Origins, right? You'll notice that I've got the blue tick here. And it basically says this runs on SteamOS, needs an internet connection, yada, yada, yada. And I also have the option for Steam Deck, right? So I can see what it would be like on the Steam Deck. So, interestingly, it's separated my device, and uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty cool pretty cool point. So, are devices on SteamOS locked to Steam games? No. You can use other launchers in desktop mode. Is it open source? Absolutely. Everything is open source, except for the Steam client program, which is obviously clearly third party. Uh, you know, proprietary stuff. Does this mean you can install it on any device? Asterisk only works with other AMD-powered PC handhelds. So if you have an Intel-powered one, 
which uh, I believe would be a GPD win that I own. Probably not gonna be as simple, but if you have AMD devices or an AMD uh, GPU, RDNA GPU, you should be fine. So of course, they say you can install it with the instructions here. So let's go to this page, and first things first, what we need to do is we need to download the recovery image right here. Now this is a three gig image, and as long as you have a flash drive, I, for instance, have this portable SSD, uh, you can plug this into your system and using a tool like Rufus on Windows, which they provide a link to right here, or Bellina Etcher if you're on Mac or Linux, like me, you can then install this. Uh, it takes a few minutes to copy over, uh, or you know, longer, depending on what the speed of your drive is. And then, depending on the device you have, they actually have different options. So if you have a Legion Go, you can follow this set of instructions, or a Rogue Ally, you can follow my set of instructions. So when you're firing this up, you hold, uh, according to these instructions, the plus key, and you press the power option. And then you navigate the BIOS to turn off things like Secure Boot, which obviously Valve wants disabled. And then going to the boot option with the hard drive connected. And another caveat with this too is you're gonna wanna need one of these like USB hubs. So if, if you're a Mac user, you're, you're probably pretty <laughs> acquainted with this. But uh, you know, unless you have a direct USB connection, most dev devices do not have these super thick USB-C ports. So you're gonna have to kind of plug them in to these uh, hubs, connect them to your device, and then load them up that way. So once that's done, uh, loading up takes a few minutes. You'll get into the actual live experience. So you'll get into a desktop environment. You have four options. If you pick the last one where you re-image your entire device, remember this will delete everything off of your handheld. If you have a Windows portion with games, personal files, ROMs, whatever, that's all going to be gone. So back up accordingly. And it takes a few minutes to re-image, uh, especially if you're installing from a actual SSD like me. And once that's done, you log in, uh, log into your Steam account, do basic setups, and lo and behold, you're actually uh, on your way to enjoying a Steam Deck experience on your device. It is actually that fucking simple, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Bob's your uncle, boys and girls. It's actually that easy, ladies and gentlemen, to get right into the Steam Deck experience on your actual handheld devices. Now, if you have an AMD-based GPU, you probably can also install this to your desktop or laptop, but it's highly advisable that you stick exclusively to the handheld stuff for now. If you want to get this same experience on a laptop or desktop, there are options like Bezite that I've talked about before, that I've shown before, that do a far more impressive job. But again, this is the most updated SteamOS version, so if I go to the settings, for instance, and I go to, um, I believe, I just go to system here real quick, you'll see that right around here, it's got SteamOS Hollow. You can change the host names. I've got OS versions, BIOS versions. I've got, you know, the Steam version. I've got the hardware right here. So according to the hardware, uh, it, oh, wow, it's actually like jumping around. Uh, I've got a Ryzen Z1 Extreme, if it even wants to stop there. Jesus Christ, this is a, this is a jumpy interface. <laughs> Maybe I'll use the actual um, controller here. So I've got a Z1 Extreme, 5 gigahertz frequency, which I assume is like the, the complete max. I've got 8 cores, 16 cores with hyper-threading. I've got 14 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, it's run my entire video card and so on and so forth. So compared, obviously, to the uh, Steam Deck that I actually had, um, this is a far more stronger device, meaning that if you really want a game, this is where you're probably going to be at if you want to get more experience, if you want to get more frame rate out of things like Cyberpunk 2077. But for a lot of lighter games, obviously, like Dragon Quest Builders 2, uh, you know, games like um, Blatro, this is an amazing device to get onto. But obviously, for a game like Fantasy Life I, which literally just came out, just started playing it, all you do is slap that big play button, and of course, you actually have a pretty simple, easy to run gaming experience. One that is far more usable than the actual uh, Windows experience. And because this is SteamOS, uh, suspending the device is incredibly simple. So once this actually boots in. Now, one thing that I've also seen here is like Easy Anti-Cheat was working. So I don't know about this game. I haven't played it online or anything, but I think the Anti-Cheat actually works pretty well with this. It's a full SteamOS supported game. But as you can see, the games are firing up and this runs games at a slightly higher resolution than the Steam Deck. So you can actually go into the Steam options. Like if you wanna just lock things down entirely, you can go to 
the uh, options over here, and I believe under display, you can go all the way to like 1280 by 800 if you want to set it to that, or you can make sure it runs at your native setting. I would always run things a little bit lower because on a screen size, honestly, this small, it doesn't matter. And unless you're only playing something like Bellatro, for instance, which is relatively light on resources, um, it's just better to have things running in a, in a way like this. But here it is. I'm going to continue the game. And of course, things work real fine. Everything looks really good. And of course, obviously, the battery life, while I don't think it's as impressive as my Steam Deck, this is still a far more stronger device. Everything just works right out of the box. And, uh, you know, things are smooth. You can actually go to the options over here and very easily, much like the Windows equivalent of these tools, you can go all the way to the power options, advanced, and let me just slap on uh, the performance overlay real quick. Actually, I think that might be better. You can go and literally limit the frame rate down to things like, I don't know, 40 hertz, for instance, and uh, it's just that easy. It works so well out of the box. It, it, it's actually not even funny. <laughs> like, it's so easy to modify these settings right here. Actually, I don't know why that's like... For, yeah, 40 is fine. <laughs> it like did a little blank out. But yeah, you can knock it down to 40 frames, get like more time out of your device. Uh, and then of course you can enable things like VRR, which uh, I don't even think is actually on my Steam Deck, but it's it brought onto this device as well. And of course you can modify the GPU clock over here, which at least I think you could, but it, it seems like that feature hasn't been done. Remember, this is still not completed finished product. And Things will change, but you can enable things like half rate shading, and you can obviously disable the frame limit if you so choose. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty damn good experience. And uh, it's only gonna get better from here. Like I said, this is again, Valve dipping their toe into this product. And uh, it's, it's kind of funny how they've given their competition the same tools that they have. So if, you know, the thing holding you back was Windows and it's, crappy experience on devices like this, nothing stopping you from buying one of these rogues, buying a Legion Go or any other equivalent handheld provided it's AMD capable and just installing this on right here. Now, obviously the thing with Steam OS, Steam Deck stuff is it literally is just the smoothest experience. So again, hit that little power button, everything turns off. You can even see up over here, it should be that this also feeds off too. Let me just hear it real quick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can, you can just, you can just like hear the fans completely go silent. And again, as long as that lights off, it's gone, but hit that power button and lo and behold, you're back in the action. And I think honestly, it's that like, I, I know I'm making a big deal of the suspend resume shit, but it, it's stuff like that, that sets this apart from like other handhelds, you know, like you really do feel like you have a proper gaming console experience and not some like handheld computer with like a like a, a barely thought out like user interface. You know, I've always wondered why Microsoft just didn't find a way to get the Xbox Series X interface working on these handheld PCs. Like that would be absolutely amazing to have. And again, if you want to access things like desktop mode, for instance, hold that power button. So go to the menu over here, hit power and just go to switch to desktop. And of course, uh, this also gives you the whole desktop experience of... Um, of Arch Linux. So here you can do other cool things. Like you can install stuff like, um, like you can install Emu Deck for instance, which gives you one of the best front ends for like an emulation experience. So you can go to their website right now over here. And again, it's super easy to start, read their manual. It just guides you through the entire process of installing Emu Deck. So again, you can just go to the download option over here. And again, you can pick exactly what system you have. Since we're on Steam OS, you can go to the SteamOS option and provide it in the desktop mode. You can go right for it, download for free. It'll give you a Emu Deck desktop download and you can follow the simple instructions right here. The finished product on the other hand, if I show you how this works is obviously in my Steam Deck library, one of the things is I can go to collections and here I've got a whole bunch of different emulators that I've had basically set up on my device. And again, it looks you know, like really proper and professional. You see, you got the cover art, everything. All of this is effectively just done for you. So let's say for instance, I wanna play something on like uh, the PlayStation 2. I can go to my PS2 library. I can go all the way down. And let's say that I wanna play, um, uh, I don't know, Scarface, the world is yours. I can just hit play on that. And of course it'll launch the executable file. 
So as it launches, I just, you know, basically get through this. Uh, I'm supposed to sign into Retro Achievements, but I, I really couldn't be asked. And of course, it just fires up. And the thing is, I love emulating on this device because I can always just like dock this on my TV and get like that proper like PS2 experience if I really wanted to with a controller attached. But here it is, the game actually runs really well, and boom, if you wanted to play Scarface on the PlayStation 2, which is an amazing, amazing game. Now, that's pretty much all that needs to be talked about with Valve SteamOS. Surprisingly, they've dropped the actual opening salvo on, <laughs> on Microsoft. And you know, Microsoft, I feel like, kind of has missed the mark with a lot of their handhelds. They've had a few years to get this up and going, as did Valve, but you know, here Valve has actually provided the secret sauce that makes the Steam Deck just so much better over its competition. Obviously, I would still prefer the Steam Deck just because of, you know, these trackpads. I'm not joking. When you're playing older PC games, especially things that don't have native controller support, it's just an absolute amazing experience. And generally, I do like how this device feels in the hand, but I feel like it's a great day today because for a lot of people that have been using other handhelds, like I have a bunch of friends that use like Asus Rogues because that's just what they were able to get in the stores. And really that's how they were able to figure out, whoa, I can play my PC games in my hand. Uh, for some people that have the Legion Go, which I think is an absolutely amazing device, I don't know why you would even buy the Steam, uh, Switch 2, uh, unless it's obviously for the exclusives when the exact same functionality it has existed for a while uh, through Lenovo at a, a much better quality, in my opinion. And now you can slap SteamOS onto it and get that actual Valve experience that sets itself apart. Obviously, it's still a long ways to go. And the important thing about this is I really do feel that Valve is maybe getting this more up for the PC uh, and, and laptops down the road, especially when and if they can achieve proper anti-cheat support, because it's gonna be a huge day when out of nowhere Valve says, hey gamers, you really don't have to compromise anymore. You wanna play those anti-cheat ridden games? You can play them underneath an entirely different operating systems, Valve SteamOS. And again, you have to remember, SteamOS has that branding that really sets itself apart from other manufacturers, right? Like, this is not a joke, right? Like, Trump telling people to use, you know, some random distro versus something that has been made by Steam, a household trusted name in PC gaming, is a totally separate thing. So this is a great first step going forward, and honestly speaking, it, it, it's pretty exciting to see that this is happening and, and it's finally come out. But yeah, if you have devices that are supporting SteamOS and you wanna you know, use a better operating system, a better experience, it's high time you switch. And uh, you know, I, I will say right now, if you do switch and you find out the experience is just better, it's just more smoother, uh, let me know in the comment section below because I would really, really like to see the usability of these other devices when the software level has finally been matched across the board. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.